Hi! In this screencast, we're going to briefly see the new Agile board functionality provided in Utrecht version 4.0, which allows teams that use Scrum as their methodology of choice to use Utrecht to visually interact with their projects while at the same time get all the great benefits that Utrecht provides. Setting up a Scrum board is merely a matter of clicking a link and defining what columns we'd like present on our board. By default, the common values corresponding to the states of open, in progress, and done are automatically selected. Although this is all configurable, as are features such as maximum amount of tasks per column, whether we want estimation fields, definition of our backlog, etc. The default out-of-the-box settings are usually sufficient. An important concept to understand about how the Agile boards work in Utrecht is that of swim lanes. In essence, a swim lane is a horizontal lane across the board that can contain one or more tasks. By default, a swim lane is mapped to the field type of an issue and value feature. Basically, this means that each swim lane represents a feature or story on the board, which in itself can be composed of multiple tasks. The correspondence between swim lanes and issues of type feature works well for most scenarios, although it is configurable if you need to make a different mapping. Once the board is set up, as we're working with Scrum, we need to define a series of sprints. Sprints are represented on the top left of the screen, and from there we can navigate back and forth through the different ones, as well as create new ones. Color coding provides us with insight on the overall state of the sprint, whereby we can see each state represented in its own color, and hovering over gives us percentages of each one. As soon as we create a sprint, our backlog is now activated, and we can start dragging and dropping features or stories over to our board. As we can see, every feature is composed of one or more tasks. We can use our cursor keys or the mouse to move around between the different tasks. We can use control arrow keys or again the mouse to move the different tasks from one state to another. And all the states will automatically update. By double clicking or pressing space, we can see a pop up of a card showing more details of that task. And we can also open a task fully by hitting enter or double clicking with the mouse. Coming back to the board, we can also press F2 to edit a task and update anything we want in that task. Finally, just like issues in the issue view, we can also apply commands to a card by first selecting it and starting to type. Alternatively, pressing Ctrl Alt J to invoke the command window. From the board, we can also directly add tasks to existing features by selecting the arrow and selecting Add Task or using the key combination Alt Insert, typing a summary and the description, and as usual, pressing Control Enter or the Save button to save that task. This will automatically place the task in the existing feature that is on the board. We can also create new features. We can click on the drop down Create Task button or use the keyboard combination of Control alt shift insert to do this. This provides a handy shortcut for creating new features without having to first add them to the backlog. The newly created feature is then placed at the bottom of the board. In addition, if we have a defect, for instance, we can also add it to the board directly. Defects or issues that do not belong to a specific feature are placed in what's called the orphan region of the board. As we're running Utrack, we can still use its powerful query engine to search for specific tasks and even customize the board for our own view, such as listing only those tasks that are assigned to us. We can hit escape at any time to go to the query field, start typing a query, and hit enter to go back and see the results on the board. In addition to the board, Scrum support in Utrack also provides a burndown chart where we can see the ideal burndown versus the current and remaining effort for each of the different sprints. We can also see the cumulative flow chart, which represents the amount of issues per stage during the sprint timeline. 
Finally, switching to the issues view, we can use the tree view icon to see a hierarchical view of our issues, seeing how a feature has a series of children as subtasks. If we click on the issue, we can also see this relationship. The number of child parent relationship is not limited, although two is normally recommended. With this short screencast, we've seen a brief overview of how to work with UTRAC when following the Scrum methodology. UTRAC can also be used as a Kanban board, but we'll cover this in a different screencast. Thanks for watching, and until next time, bye bye.